Hi, I'm Kent, and I'm going to show you my new kiln. This is obviously not a new kiln. It is new to me. Um, my old kiln, the, the Paragon, uh, has been treating me well. Um, you know, I did another video on that, and I've talked about how it's been a good starter kiln for me, um, especially during the pandemic. I, I purchased a kiln because lots of things were closed, and I actually couldn't go and fire pots. So I found the Caldera on Craigslist, and it's tiny, but it's been treating me well. However, as I've continued to pottery, it's going on, I think, about eight months now, the kiln is starting to be a limitation. On and off, I've been thinking about getting a bigger kiln, and I think I've been spoiled having a kiln in my garage. I could probably actually take pots to the pottery store now, but uh, it's a little ways away, and having it in my garage and being able to go out and do it has been very convenient. So I've been looking around a little bit on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist at kilns. I've also been educating myself to see what is a good kiln and what is not a good kiln. So I felt confident enough that I knew what a decent uh, used kiln would be. Um, and I found this one and it was a great price. Um, it was really too cheap to pass up. It is much bigger than I expected though. So a little bit of the story. So I found uh, the kiln on a Craigslist, messaged the guy. Um, it was uh, maybe 45 minutes away, which is a, a little bit far here, um, but not too bad. Um, the story behind it, it was actually used at a university. Um, and he had done some part-time instruction there. And when the university decided to upgrade their kilns, he was able to acquire it. However, he didn't have the proper electrical service to actually use it. So he'd never tested it out. So I don't know if this kiln is in working order, although I suspect um, the pieces that I'm going to use are just fine. So I went down, looked at it. It was exactly what he said it was going to be. There are definitely some things that are broken and need service. Um, and I will talk about that in a few minutes when I show you around the kiln. But I think it's going to be a good kiln to, to serve my purposes. So what is this kiln? Well, first of all, it's one of Scut's older kilns. Um, it is a Scut. Um, it's actually the model uh, 231. There's a, there's a faceplate here, but it is basically worn out. Um, there's a little bit of engraving that you can barely make out some of the details, but it is a, a Scut uh, 231. So this is before they switched over to the, the new naming convention. Um, so it's a 10-sided kiln. So there are 10 sides of bricks. Um, it is three layers deep. So SCUT is great. They have tons of information online um, to explain both how their old and new kilns work. They have a, a service manual. So this is the service training manual. And on in there, it says there's the old style model number. And I have the 231. And you can see that re, uh, corresponds to the 1027 or the KS 1027. I wasn't sure exactly where, where these uh, numbers came from. Well, it turns out there's another uh, piece of paper that explains uh, what's going on for this. So how do you pick the right kiln? So it turns out the model numbers for the new kilns are based upon the number of bricks around the outside and then the depth. So 1027 means there's 10 bricks around the outside of the kiln and then 27 inches deep uh, is, is the 27. So if I were to buy this kiln today, it would be a, a 1027 kiln. So I'll do a quick uh, tour of the kiln. So uh, first um, there's the lid. So the lid support is uh, broken. Um, it doesn't actually attach. Um, and that will need to be fixed. Um, apparently, uh, over the years, uh, Scut changed their lid support. This one is pretty wimpy. Um, so I actually uh, ordered uh, parts to uh, do a, a more modern support. Um, the lid is relatively heavy, but it works. Um, you'll notice the controls are all cattywampus right now. Um, I just stopped it, stacked this here so I could work on it. This is not its final resting place. I'm going to have to uh, make a home for it. The way this works is there's actually plugs in the top and bottom of each of these different control units for each of the different sections and they, they plug together into the central control unit. Um, and the kiln sitter is actually back over there. That's actually um, uh, what, what helps with the firing. Um, on the side of here, there are, are knobs on each of the different units. Um, there's a high, a medium, and an off. And I'll explain what those are in a few minutes. I had to look it up online. And the middle is where the power goes on um, and the electrical service goes in. This is actually a very old plug. Um, this is actually the neutral line and the two hot lines for the 240 volts. There is no ground on this. So that is one of the things that I want to fix actually when I add a proper ground uh, to the system. So looking at the kiln closely, um, these connections here um, are not in good shape. Um, so actually to worry about the electronics on this. Likewise, this has a kiln sitter. So uh, the way it works is actually you take a cone and put it inside the kiln and as the cone melts, um, there's actually a little lever that triggers that uh, shuts off the kiln when it gets to temperature. Um, this is a far cry from uh, thermocouples and uh, modern uh, microcontrollers that actually uh, uh, power the kiln. 
My Paragon uh, has a digital control system. I am very so much spoiled by that. I also have a background on technology, um, so I understand these things. I want to replace um, the, the kiln sitter in particular um, with uh, modern uh, electronics. So it can actually have a, a PID system, so it can gradually ramp uh, the temperature according to a, a program curve and then, and then turn it off. In the process of doing that, I suspect I'm also going to be replacing out a lot of these electronic systems. All right, next I'll show you inside the kiln. So I'll lift the lid up. All right, so the sections aren't all lined because I need to get to the electronics and they all plug in together. So I've set them off to the side. Um, this is exactly how I get the, got the kiln. I just stacked all these pieces up here temporarily so I can work on it. Um, one of the things I noticed is that it's actually relatively good shape. Um, all the bricks are basically intact. You know, there's some cracks and some chips, but um, relative to some of the kilns I've seen online, not too bad. Likewise, the elements look like they're in relatively good shape. Um, this bottom uh, ring down here has a few that are poking out a little bit. Um, otherwise, they're actually relatively intact. So I don't know if these are the original elements or not, but it seems like it's been, uh, been kept in shape relatively well. Um, this over here, barely make it out, um, is where the kiln sitter goes. Um, from what I understand, there are a couple of uh, metal pieces that stick out, um, and then there's a, a cone that goes in here that goes horizontally across them. And so there's a, basically a lever that goes to the outside. I'll show you that in a minute. And as the cone melts, it gradually goes down and goes down until it triggers um, and turns off the kiln. So very old school technology. Um, I will definitely be upgrading that and replacing it with a thermocoupler. But overall, the, the kiln itself, the body, the bricks, everything looked like they're in, in pretty good shape uh, given, given the age of the kiln. So I think it's going to serve me well. Okay, here are the heart of the electronics for the, the kiln. So there are these three boxes. On modern scut kilns, this is all one piece and the door opens. Um, with this one, there's actually these plugs that uh, open and close. But if you look uh, closely at these, and actually this one in particular, there's some corrosion on these. And so I, I'd imagine that's why they, they moved over uh, away from it over time. The power comes in this main box, um, and then it distributes power up and up and down. Um, the last thing over here is the kiln sitter. So I showed you inside that, that metal bar, so it actually goes here. So the way this works is it goes and it clamps down here. And as the metal bar sinks, it releases, and that drops down. There's actually a, a contactor in there, so when it falls down, it actually disconnects the power. So very old school electrical mechanical system. Um, I'm going to replace that with some modern electronics. So SCUD is great. They actually have a ton of information about their kilns online. So I found out that this was the, the 231 by looking at the name plate and I found this wiring diagram. So it actually shows a couple different models. They're all using, these are our list of components and here's, here's the wiring diagram itself. Um, I'll throw some of these links up um, in the description. But a quick overview, basically it, the power comes in, it goes to the uh, main control box, which is the middle one. Um, and then it goes and distributed through the plug up and down, um, as well as out. Um, within each of the different uh, sections, there are two sets of elements. Power goes out, goes through the element, and comes back. And these basically are really big resistors. They get hot, basically like your toaster. The kilns are really, really big hot toasters. So the power comes in. Um, this here is the switch that's off to the side and it does um, high, medium, and off. What it's doing is it's actually turning on high, will turn on both sets of elements in each section. On medium, it's actually only turning on one of the elements, and then off is obviously off, and it's not having power to any of the sections. The other thing to note on here is that um, there's a bunch of voltages and uh, uh, power numbers next to these. So the different kilns, whether it's a 240 or um, the three phase, uh, which is a lower voltage, um, it will use uh, different elements in it. The other thing is these old kilns, and I don't know if this is true, the, the modern ones are not, the top and bottom elements are actually higher power than all of the middle elements. So when you look online and you look for replacement elements, it'll ask you which one you're trying to replace. Um, and that's why, it's because those two elements are, are higher power. It's basically to account for the heat loss coming out the top and bottom of the kiln. One of the other interesting things I noted is that there's also a 23118. This bottom section is not here. So it really only has the, the top and the middle and what they do is they replace the element uh, that would be in the bottom of the middle with the same element that's in the bottom of the, the current bottom. So you can actually turn this into a, a two-section kiln. And that's really appealing to me. This thing's huge. Um, I don't think I'll be making pots this big or I'll be able to fill up this kiln. 
So I think what I'm tempted to do is actually uh, remove one of the sections as I convert it and upgrade it to just be two sections or, or maybe even one. Um, we'll, we'll see what I actually need. Um, but right now I'm thinking about making it a two section kiln. So instead of being a 27 inch deep uh, kiln, this will be an 18 inch deep kiln. So that's the old school electronics. Um, I suspect uh, most of these are going to go away um, as I want to upgrade it to a thermal couple. So in looking online, I can also then go and see, well, what does a modern uh, 1027 look like? And there's a wiring diagram for that. So we can actually put these two side by side. So here's the old school wiring diagram of the new one. So the, the flow is basically the same. Power comes in, there's a terminal block here. Um, so the power can be distributed. And then there's a bunch of relays. Uh, there are no relays in this old system. It just switches and, and the kiln sitter. Um, the power also goes up through a transformer to a control board. Um, the transformer steps down the 240 volts uh, into something that the electronics can use. Um, out of there come signals for the relays. There's also a, a signal for a thermal couple, which sits in the middle section. And I will be adding a thermal couple here. Um, otherwise, it's the same, right? Because the physical setup is very much uh, similar. So there are three sections that correspond to the three sections of the kilns. There are two elements in each section. One of the things that's different is how the elements are actually wired up to the relays, which are basically an electromechanical switch relative to the physical switches, the high-low switches that are, are in the, the kiln that I have. So in the kiln that I have, the high and the, the medium actually switches between uh, both elements on versus only one of the elements on. In the modern kilns, those are actually wired uh, in parallel. So there is no way to turn on only one set of the elements within, within the kiln. This probably doesn't matter um, because of the relay can actually uh, turn on and off the elements so they can actually get them to the right temperature. Um, but that was one of the interesting things that I noticed. Um, so the relay is actually controlling one section of the kiln at a time. And looking at the way this is wired up, the control signals actually turn all the relays on and off at the same time. So there's one signal coming out of the controller that's looking at the temperature from the thermal couple. It's then turning on each of these relays simultaneously on and off. And then those relays then control the power for each of the different sections. So the, the old kiln would be on um, all the time or at a certain level, potentially by selecting different elements manually. The new one is basically turning on all the elements at, at once, letting them run for a certain time and then turning it off, gradually doing that so they're on longer and longer to, to pull up the temperature. So I think I'm going to actually replace um, the electronics with my own custom ones. I found an open source version. I bought the same relays um, to go into the controller. So I will use the ones that Scott currently uses since I think that's going to be good. Potentially, I can actually wire this up differently. I could wire it up so I can control all the different elements uh, separately. But given that they're modern kilns, um, turn them all on and off together, I will start there and see how it does. So this is my uh, new old kiln. Um, uh, in future videos, I will go through uh, tearing down the electronics um, that are in here to see exactly what needs to be replaced. I will then look at turning this 231 kiln into basically a 1027. Um, there will be some slight differences, but I suspect overall it will be uh, operating much more like this kiln than the old one. Bring it up to the modern age with a thermocouple and uh, some electronics to control the temperature. Um, I hope that was an informative. And I look forward to seeing you next time. If you have any questions, uh, please drop a comment. I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks.